below the top of the stock. Um, here's a scraper I've made out of a bandsaw blade. Uh, really easy to make. It's uh, got two rounded profiles on it, a smaller one and a larger one. Um, back here where it's octagon shaped, um, I'll use um, a straight chisel, but it transitioned into round up in here. I'll scrape this with this one and uh, I'll start scraping back here with the quarter inch straight chisel and a scraper just takes off a tiny little bit of wood just trying to smooth it out and just any high spots really just be careful up here on the sides A lot of original guns, they, those old guys, they didn't, they didn't get too fancy with the barrel channels. Um, some of them did, but a lot of them, a lot of the original guns are not <laughs> very nice in the barrel channels. I'll show you a couple originals when I get done here. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll put the barrel back in and see what we've got. The breech area can sometimes be deceiving also um, if you're hitting you might be hitting up in here or in the in the inlet you can tell when you uh when you lift this barrel out by the muzzle the breech will go tip down a little bit so and it will uh when it does it'll print just like that it'll print back here but it's not hitting back there so you need to be careful of that oh yeah it's looking a lot better now we're getting printing all over the place now let's scrape our high spots down again looks really good to me printing really well yeah, my blacks wearing off the barrel a little bit but I think that's good all right we're gonna call that good and uh, next we're gonna measure our barrel channel to ramrod channel uh, the web in between there to see how they are in relation with each other um, that'll give us a nice slim gun Okay, so I've got the breech area and the muzzle area Where I want them to be the thickness between the ramrod channel and the bottom of the barrel here is about an eighth of an inch up here and uh, Up here. It's uh, flush with the top of the stock back there so what I want to do is um, I want to measure the web thickness here and I want it to be the same up here where the ramrod enters the hole in the forearm. So I use a pair of uh, calipers, old school calipers, to gauge this thickness here and I'll bring them all the way up here and measure this in here. It'll be thicker here probably. Um, the reason I do that is it takes the whole gun and kind of slims it down thickness wise 
Um, so we'll measure this out. Here at the muzzle, I'm about that thick. That's about a little over an eighth of an inch. So these things will flex a little bit. So I'm gonna run run it all the way up here to where the ramrod enters the stock. And it's a lot tighter, so it's thicker there. And I'll gauge this. And see, it's a little thicker there. It's about three sixteenths of an inch. So up here, I want to inlet the barrel about another one sixteenth of an inch, a little bit deeper. It, it, it doesn't seem like much, but it'll make the whole gun seem a lot more slim and light and narrow. So that's what we'll do next. I know it's a kind of a pain in the butt, more inlighting, but it's well worth it. Okay, back here at the breech area, our gauging hole here, I'm going to go ahead and measure that. That'll give me the measurement from the bottom of the ramrod hole to the very bottom of um, the barrel inlet. That'll tell us roughly how much uh, room we have the web thickness in between there for our lock bolt to go through so i'm here's this little gauge a depth gauge that i've made up um just a piece of wire a uh, piece of maple you might be familiar with these but i just put it in there till it bottoms out against the ramrod hole and i put a little pencil line on it at the bottom of the barrel inlet here. You probably can't see that on the screen, but I'm gonna measure it here. And it is five eighths of an inch, a little less than five eighths of an inch. That's plenty of room for a ramrod and an 832 or 1032 lock bolt to go through. So we're going to use a 1032 on this. It's a pretty big uh, board rifle. I could take the barrel down another eighth of an inch since, since we're at five eighths of an inch here. Yeah, it's a little less than five eighths. Uh, I could take it down to a half an inch. Um, I'm not going to since the, we're using a 1032 lock bolt through the side of here that'll leave us plenty of room. But if you're building a really slim rifle, like a uh, Lehigh Valley or something like that, you would want to narrow that web thickness down substantially so, and maybe even use a 632 or 832 screw through there and make your webbing uh, through here an eighth of an inch even not very much at all to make your whole gun a lot slimmer right through this area which is hard to do okay I've got the uh, barrel channel all scraped and smooth and uh, there's no gaps in between it and the, the wood in the barrel. Um, the very front here, the web thickness here is about an eighth of an inch, a little over. And it is the same here where the ramrod enters the forestock there. It's the same thickness. I also took the uh, barrel down a little bit farther in here. It's uh, my measurement from the bottom of the... Uh, ramrod channel to the bottom of the barrel channel is 9 sixteenths now instead of 5 eighths so that'll help it get a little bit narrower and slimmer here 
Now I'll show you why we laid out uh, our barrel a little bit to the right here. You can see I've laid out where our ramrod hole is. It's a little bit to the left here of um, our barrel. That'll, that helps us. Well, let me see if I can do this here. When we install our lock, that mainspring right there won't be getting into the ramrod hole because we kicked the barrel over to the right about a sixteenth of an inch to leave a little bit uh, more wood in between the mainspring of the lock and the uh, ramrod hole so that's why we did that um, the next thing we need to do is focus on our breech, uh, our barrel's breech face back here all the force of the recoil goes against that face of wood right there so we need to uh, we'll take our marker and we'll mark the end of our barrel get it all blackened up we'll put our barrel back in here and I'll tap on it on the muzzle end down here with the wood mallet not real hard you don't want to mess your barrel up but it'll print on the face of this we need to get a full circle we need to see the entire end of this barrel printing on that face right there very important I'm gonna take the marker and just mark all over the back side of the breech of this barrel get it all blackened up there you can use a candle and use the suit off of a candle this is a little easier and faster that's how they did it in the old days or right, there's that and I'll put the barrel back in here and give it a few taps with the mallet touching on the top there and a little tiny spot over here so I'm going to take my little mortising chisel this thing is like a daggone razor and that's what you want start cutting these high spots the black spots off very very little amount of wood not much at all And put the barrel back in and do it again. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. Full circle. Uh, so basically, our barrel and lot is all finished. All the way down here. Next thing will be uh, inlighting the breech plug tying. And I'll show you that in the next video. Thanks for watching, y'all.